I was privileged to serve as the chairman of the uh, subcommittee uh, 2008 and 2009 under uh, the economic meltdown. I was one of the members, uh, three of us governors and uh, uh, some other members with Mr. President as chairman. So I was to, I, I chaired the committee on subsidy and everything about uh, the subsidy com uh, regime and then the scam in the subsidy review was discovered by my committee. And uh, of course, since then, uh, uh, you know, recommendations were made, which unfortunately were never implemented. And it's very sad. Uh, I'm sad to uh, um, let Nigerians know that from what I saw, we came across situations where subsidy was claimed on pipelines that never existed. You just claim that they have pumped X amount of, uh, you know, uh, either finished products or crude, maybe from Kaduna, I mean, from Wari to Kaduna. Uh, who, NPC? Making this claim? Of okay, course, who else is doing it? Oh, dear. Those that pump and those that are in the subsidies come, they just fill papers, invoices, and they claim subsidy on it. In fact, there was an instance of a pipeline that uh, was supposed to exist between Lagos and Wari. And tons and tons of monies were collected on subsidy on a pipeline that never existed. This is Nigeria for you. But I thought they were telling us that it is uh, marketers and some other persons who they are, are perpetrating they, the they fraud. Are, they are so all, NPC is involved? They are all involved in these things. All of them. Oh. All of them. And uh, I must say, I will sadly also report that you see, uh, Nigeria subsidy, if uh, it's uh, that part of it that is act actually goes for the subsidy, we go on subsidizing sub-Saharan Africa and Central Africa because the bulk of these products are smuggled out of this country. Hmm. Then but, who is subsidizing who? Wait, that report that you spoke about, about NNPC, all of them being involved, was it submitted to the government? Of course government, it was. Government knows about this? Of course, yes, they do. And um, attempts were made, but I'm telling you, it can be very frustrating in Nigeria to implement policies, especially where there are interests, interests and a cabal that exist. It's just similar to what you have as a disbunkering issue. Something not it can be stopped, but wow. you can't stop it. It can be stopped, but the political will to stop it is not there. There are so many interests that are involved there, and that's what is leading Nigeria to where we are today. At the point in time during the Jonathan regime, I know uh, we, we have hardly were pumping up to uh, one million barrels a day, and the prices kept crashing. Then how do you manage the economy that is dependent on oil? So uh, the subsidy regime, like I said, uh, should have gone way back in 2012, 2013. Should have gone. Any person that is shouting subsidies, subsidies are going to affect that is affected. This is a selfish person. A person who is connected to the scammers that are killing this country. What you said is very shocking to a lot of Nigerians. Much as you say you are sad to tell, but yes, it, it's important that Nigerians know. And that means that all this while, the previous government and previous governments have been lying to Nigerians I think about so. this subsidy matter. I think, I think so. They didn't have the political way to take the decisions to remove it. All this, they say, ah, IMF is pushing us, IMF is that, World Bank is it. That is not the issue. In fact, I have one of my friends who is in the oil industry. Uh, we traveled to China with him, the, uh, one of the presidents of Nigeria. He told me, my brother, because we were discussing the subsidy issue, say, I'm, I'm a member of the, uh, uh, the economic team of Mr. President. Mm -hmm. And when I went for a meeting, I told him, Mr. President, I called him by the side. I said, Mr. President, please remove this subsidy. He said, I am, we are tired of making money. What? Yes, I'm telling you to God Almighty. He said, we are money. tired of making money, Mr. President, remove this subsidy. Because he is a patriot and he has seen the scams that are going on there. Goodness. And he told me he's alive today. Oh. Won't your friend then say that they were tired of making they money, tired of understanding making the scam? So did they tell you why didn't the president go ahead and remove it? Because if he had that first-hand information, 
He should have acted, the former president. I'm sorry, my brother. The president may not have done it because of the entrenched interest. It could be, even be at the risk of his life. But at least the, the president of Nigeria is adequately protected. If I were mm -hmm. him, I would have beaten the bullet and taken the decision. So why, yeah, Let hell why? fall, because the, the poor man out there is suffering and dying of hunger. Yeah, but, but, and we are busy feeding on them in collaboration with foreigners. But the risk of his life cannot, may not be tenable because he's very well protected as president. Yes, so, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering. Probably, I mean, uh, uh, the whole thing was uh, maybe shrouded in something very cloudy that you cannot understand. Because why are you a worker? Why are you? You are there to yeah. take decisions on a daily basis. And this decision can be right or wrong. You have the, the, the right to take those decisions. And you see a good... <laughs> Ninja. That was the former governor of Boshi State and former aviation minister Isa Yuguda opening some kind of worms there. He's basically indicting his friend and the so-called former president. He stated that a few people were siphoning the financial resources of the country at the detriment of the masses. He spoke today on Monday during an interview on Channel's television Sunrise Daily. He explained that the perpetrators of the subsidy scam had made so much money from Nigeria and had brought the nation to its knees financially. He narrated an incident that we all just heard when a friend of his had alighted the kind of money made from the scam. He said, I remember a friend of mine in the oil industry who, during a meeting of an economic think tank, he called the then president outside and said, Mr. President, please stop the subsidy. We are tired of making money. Yuguda, however, did not name the friend or the president involved. He also noted that we are bringing in this fuel at an elevated cost and half of it is exported out of Nigeria by the same people collecting money for it. Subsidy was claimed on pipelines that never existed. Invoices created and NNPC just pays. He noted that there is no reason why the refineries in the country are not functional despite the billions of naira spent on them every year. The former governor also called for the prosecution of those involved in the subsidy scam, noting that since 2009, a committee he headed had uncovered the scam and drawn government's attention to it and that the scam has grown over time. The records are all there, he said, and there is no time limit to investigate these people. If government has the political will, these individuals can be held to account, he said. He also said the former president, Muhammadu Buhari, must have known of the subsidy scam since he was the president and minister of petroleum. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.